critters or whatever you want to call them, aliens in them. One survived, and I believe uh, six or seven were. Uh, I don't know the whole story about the whole thing. And one of the artifacts I have here on the table is uh, when, I was ch when I was a young child, I was uh, about 14 time. Um, I had a fr friend of my father, was uh, Sir Johnny Rollins. Uh, he was, uh, had a British naval intelligence. And uh, he gave me, I asked him if I could have a piece of metal of this crashed disc, and my father protested violently. And I, but anyway, you know, Johnny Rollins said, sure, I can give you a little piece. And, you know, was, uh, he gave me a little piece of adamant in my collection ever since. That was kind of like the small start of a collection. But uh, other than that, uh, the UFOs really wasn't my bag until uh, I started work at Area 51, uh, which is in the Nellis Air Force Base uh, north of uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, during in uh, going back in 1979 in a firefight, it took me about two and a half years to recuperate, enough that I could go back to work. But I did. I survived and I went back to work. Through Morrison Canoes and EG and and back to all page and page and other construction outfits at the time. <coughs> anyway, uh, at Area 51, they were testing all kinds of very peculiar spacecraft. I think you're also, uh, how many people here, for instance, are familiar with Bob Lazar's story? Good. That's, that's a good, good group indeed. I, I suggest you, more of you uh, uh, buy his, or obtain his tape or borrow his tape and uh, read some of the publications. He was a physicist who worked at Los Alamos National Laboratory. Uh, at Area 51, trying to decipher the, what was the propulsion factor of, of basically these alien spacecraft, these disks and other kinds of type of, type of, of craft. So, but there's another thing I want to talk to you about other than all this stuff about deep underground military basing that might be effective. Um, we're all basically here as as kind of like a captive audience, and except, except that we're all worried about the strange activity of our federal government. I'm very worried about it. Uh, they've stonewalled senators. They've lied to the public. They refuse to tell the truth in regards to the alien matters. Um, uh, I, I can go on and on. That, uh, the list is, uh, it would take longer than there are days here, <laughs> let alone minutes. So I can tell you that, uh, uh, for in all respects, I'm rather disgruntled that uh, since I used to be a rather high-ranking worker in our federal government structure, uh, I'm very disappointed in the activities of our federal government, very worried. For instance, i to run by several topics to you. Uh, recently, I happen to know somebody who lives in or out. I live just south of Portland, Oregon. I know somebody that works at Gunderson. Uh, steel fabrication, and what they do is they make railroad cars. And uh, a fellow I know, I've known for the better part of 30 years, uh, he works there, he's a, kind of a lead welder and engineer. He's kind of a quiet type, and he, he, he came in excited to me. He called me up, and I met him, and I tried to calm him down quite a bit. But he told me, he says, well, they're building prisoner cars. They're going to Looks like the federal looks like everything you've been talking about the federal government is, is starting to happen and he was real nervous about it. And I said, going to slow down, Bob. So anyway, he told me what was happening. He mentioned that Gunderson has got a contract with the federal government to build 107,200 full length rail cars, each with 143 pairs of shackles in each road in each car. And there are 11 subcontractors in this giant project, and supposedly Gunnarsson got over $2 billion for the contract. Um, Bethlehem Steel, uh, there's different steel outfits, there's different fabrication outfits across the country are building them. Anyway, I says, hey, this is a nice, fantastic story, but uh, how does it pertain? And he says, well, i got to show you one of these cars. So we did. We went to the rail yards in North Portland. I call it Graffitiville, USA, because it's wall-to-wall graffiti. And uh, there's a new car 
and he popped open the seal and slid the door back, and there we were. Why he wasn't wrong. Yeah, it's scary. Now, if you multiply 102,000, excuse 107,200 times 143 times 11, we'll come up with a monster figure of about 15 million. 15 million is about the number of 